Hello everyone, this is Manny here. Welcome to this lesson on one-sided limits. We're going to go and discuss notation first. Uh, the notation for one-sided limits is quite similar to that of the limits we looked at in the previous lesson. Recall that for those limits, we try to approach from both sides. Now this time we're considering uh, choosing a particular side. If there is a negative sign after the value of interest, which in this case C, uh, this is concerned with approaching from the left side. Now if there's a positive sign, then it's simply going to be coming in from the right side, otherwise known as a right-handed limit. All right, recall that in the previous lesson, in order for a limit to exist, both sides have to agree to the same value. In this case, we called that value L. In other words, each one-sided limit has to be approaching that particular value, and this value has to be the same when approaching from either side. Uh, in this case, from the left side, from the right side, they have to be equal to each other. Um, and if they are equal to each other and they're equal to the limit L, then we see that the general limit, this is the limit that we introduced in the previous section in 1.1, um, then that general limit is also equal to L. If at any point these one-sided limits do not exist or equal to infinity or, or they do not equal to each other, let's say that they do not equal to each other, then in that case, we would say that the limit does not exist. So if these do not equal to each other, then in that case, the limit does not exist. Determine the value of the limit of sine of 1 over theta as theta approaches 0 by using the graph below and by looking at the one-sided limits. Okay, so um, here's the graph of one, 1 over sine theta, and uh, we're concerned with approaching from the left side here. Um, we're going to do both sides because this is a general limit. Um, so, but first we're going to do it from the left side, and remember to denote that. We write a negative sign there, and I'm going to call this function f of theta just for simplicity. Okay, so we're going to approach it from the left side. And as we approach from the left side, um, notice how the graph behaves. The graph um, basically behaves erratically. It increases, decreases, increases, decreases. So it basically oscillates uh, about this point, or around this point. So uh, it doesn't approach a definite value. So we're going to say it does not exist. Now remember, um, the function can move up and down as long as it doesn't uh, continue to do so um, near the point. So if you had, for example, you know, a simple graph like this, um, and let's say you, know, you have a sinusoidal function, Then as you approach from the left side, notice that the graph increases, decreases, increases, decreases, but you're, but you're still approaching this point. The problem is that as we approach the origin here, this function doesn't actually approach any single value at all, and that's why we say it does not exist. So now if we do it from the right side, Then uh, we also say, you know, we're approaching it from the right side. The the um, the graph behaves erratically. Of course, it goes up and down. It doesn't approach any single value. So we also say that does not exist. Uh, since at least one of these do not exist, right? Uh, this means that the value of the overall limit does not exist. Okay, 
So we're going to determine the limits, the value of the following limits, um, following limits and values, not just limits. Um, and the graph is given here. So you have a sinusoidal function, then you have some kind of hyperbolic function with a vertical asymptote, and you have a, a line. So this is a, a definitely a piecewise function. So now let's look at what f of negative 5 is. So we're going to look at x equals negative 5. This is basically asking for a point, right? It's at, uh, it's, it gives you your negative 5, and you want to simply find the y value at that, at that you know, uh, x value. So at negative 5, we have a value of negative 1. So that is the answer for part A. So this coordinate is negative 5, comma, negative 1, but they're only looking for the y value. Now for part B, we want to do the limit as x approaches negative 5 um, from the left side, because notice that negative sign there. So we're approaching um, negative 5 from the left side. And so notice how the graph behaves. And it approaches, it seems to be approaching that um, point. And so, therefore, we say that the limit from the left side is also negative 1. Okay, if you want to do it from the right side, then the graph, be, the graph decreases, decreases, and it still seems to be approaching that point as we approach negative, the, x, the value x equals negative 5. Remember, x equals negative 5 is, you can think of it as a vertical line that you're approaching, that, v, that value. This is x equals negative 5, and you're approaching that. And so it still seems to be approaching a y value of negative 1. So we're going to say that that's negative 1. So these are both negative 1. Or all three of these are negative 1. Now, um, notice that the two one-sided limits are equal to negative 1. So that must mean um, that the general limit has to equal to negative 1. So that means the general limit exists and it's equal to negative 1, uh, based on the previous slide. All right, now let's look at uh, f of 3. Let me erase this. So let's look at f of 3. So this is the value x equals 3 here. So notice that this is a vertical asymptote. This means that the point does not exist. There is no y value for this um, uh, for this x value. So we say does not exist, or you can say undefined, or does not exist. Now uh, part f, as you approach from the left side, notice that the graph is increasing and it's not approaching a definite value. It just keeps blowing up. In fact, it blows up to infinity. And so we can say either infinity or we can just say it does not exist. I tend to like saying infinity, but they're both appropriate. Now as we approach 3 from the left side, or from the right side, sorry, then the graph, look how the graph behaves. The graph increases and then has a jump and then it decreases. We're looking at ultimately how the graph behaves. So the graph can do all sorts of stuff, but ultimately it basically uh, approaches negative infinity. It just keeps getting more and more into the negative numbers. So we say that this does not exist as well. Or you could alternatively say negative infinity. Okay, so now this means that since at least one of these do not exist, right? It's it's either at least one of them don't exist or um, they don't agree as to the same value. So, and that means that this does not exist. Okay, so for 6.5, uh, remember we're looking at a point here which means that we're looking at a filled point, not a void point. So we look at 6.5, and it says here we have a value of negative 2.859. But remember, this is not the point that you're considering because this does not exist. Look how the point is not filled, right? It's a, a void point, so it's not part of the function. So 
And therefore, we're looking at this point here. This is uh, x equals 6.5. And the y value of that is about 2. Okay, so we say that, that uh, f of 6.5 is equal to 2. If you want to approach from the left side, so we're going to approach from the left side. So let me just uh, draw uh, you know, a little vertical line here denoting x equals 6.5 just to kind of visualize it. And you want to be you want to be able to approach this from the left side. Now the only way you can approach this from the left side, I mean, if you approach it all the way here, that's fine. You know, it increases, decreases, goes up here, then it jumps. But ultimately, it's going here, right? It's If you're coming from the left side, it's coming up here and it's approaching this void point. And this void point is, the y value of that is negative 2.859. So that is the limit from the left side. And this should say from the right side, but so that's from the right side. And this should be a general limit. Okay, so from the right side, the graph basically increases, increases, and approaches this um, solid point here, which is at a y value of negative 2. So we say that that is equal to negative 2. Finally, we have the general limit. So just the limit as x approaches 6.5. Um, notice that the two one-sided limits do not agree, right? They're not equal to each other. So they're not equal to each other. Uh, and therefore, we see that this does not exist. Okay, determine the limits for the following piecewise function. So uh, I included this example so that we can um, um, get accustomed to graphing uh, piecewise functions. So let's go ahead and graph this and then use the graph in order to determine the answers to part A through F. So here, uh, let's look at the first part. So we're looking for X is greater than 1. That should actually say um, less than 1. So let's erase that. So that should be less than 1. Okay, so let's let x be less than 1. And uh, let's label this nice, nicely here. Five. So even though this is says less than 1, we still have to plug in 1 into this in order to figure out what, you know, what point to plot. So we're going to do it right now. 3 times 1 plus 4 equals 3 plus 4, which is 7. Okay, so that means we have a point 1, 7, and it's not a filled point, though. It's just going to be a void point here. So we're going to just do that. And since this is a line, we can use rise over run to help us out, right? Because we have 3x plus 4. And the slope here is 3 over 1, because remember, mx plus b. Right? So we're going to use rise over run here. So we're going to, and we know that this is positive, which means it's a line that's going up from left to right. So uh, I can also say, okay, I can go down 3, and then here 1, down 3, here one, that way I get a line that's going upward from left to right. So let me um, graph the line. Let me graph it in red. Okay. Okay, something like that. Now, now, let's go ahead and do the second point here. So the, uh, the second one statement says that f of x is equal to 2 when x is between 1 and 5. So we're going to go ahead and just plot that one between 1 and 5. Now, when x is 1, y is 2. 
right? And that, and it says it's equal to, so therefore we're going to fill it in with a solid dot. And the same thing goes, so it just becomes the function y equals 2, which is nothing more than a straight horizontal line. And it's filled in at 5, or it's not filled in at 5. So that should not be filled in. Okay. Then we have x minus 5 uh, at when x is greater than or equal to 5. So we're just going to plug in uh, 5. Um, so you get 5 minus 5, which is 0. So that means we got a, a point at 5, comma, 0. And that is an actual filled point there. And um, we're just going to use rise over run. So remember the slope of x minus 5. The slope is here is 1 or the same thing as 1 over 1. So you can go down and it's positive. So that means it goes uphill. So that means uh, you can think of it as going down uh, 1 over 1. But remember, we don't want to include this point because then that's going, that's interfering with... Um, the domain of here, right? So it's no longer going to be a function. So we want to just continue it over here. So we're going to go up one over one, up one over one. Okay, and that is our curve. Now we're going to try to uh, evaluate these limits. Okay, so let's do the first part. Uh, this is just uh, saying, this is not a limit at all. This is just finding the y value at x equals 1. So x equals 1, we have a y value. And it, this is a filled y value. It's not going to be this one because that's not filled. So the filled y value, and this is at y equals 2. So we say that this is equal to 2. The limit of f of x as x approaches 1 from the left side. So x is approaching 1 here from the left side. What happens to the graph? Um, well, the graph coming in from the left side, the graph increases, 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 and it's approaching one now. Uh, it's approaching x equals one, and it's in it, but the actual graph is approaching this y value of seven. So the limit from the right, uh, from the left side is seven. Now the limit from the right side, remember you're gonna be going coming in from the right side, which means the graph uh, comes down here, then skips, then goes here. Ultimately though, it, it just reaches this y value of two. Uh, so I mean, not reaches, but it approaches that y value. That's the correct term. So we have a y value of two. The limit is two. Now, Now, the problem is not here, but let's say we wanted to do the general limit as x approaches 1. Then, since the one-sided limits here do not coincide, uh, this means that the overall limit does not exist. Okay. Now, if you want to do part D, f of 5, um, you're not looking at this one. You're looking at the uh, filled in point. So, f of 5 is 0, a uh, y value of 0. So this is zero. Now we want to do a limit as x approaches five from the left side. So x is approaching five, getting closer and closer. And this function is doing this. You know, it's increasing. Then here, then jumps down, then goes in this direction. And notice that as it travels from left to right, uh, it's approaching this void point, which is at a y equals two. Oops, I did not mean to erase that. Okay. Okay, now we're going to do from the right side. As you approach from the right side, the graph decreases and approaches this y value of zero. So the limit from the right side is zero. And therefore, if you were to do the overall limit, x approaches 5, then that's going to be does not exist. 
because these are not the same value. So all there is to these piecewise functions are not too bad. Okay, so we're going to just review what we did. Um, so we learned about the notation for the one-sided limit. Remember that the limit exists if both one-sided limits exist. And both one-sided limits have to agree to the same value. Okay, so remember we say that this is the limit as x approaches, say, a value c from the left side has to equal the right-handed limit. Okay. If they're equal, then that means, uh, let's say they're equal to um, L, and that means the overall limit is equal to L. If at any point one of these fails, one of these do not exist, one of these approaches infinity, anything like that, or they do, they do not equal each other, then this limit fails to exist, and we say it does not exist. Okay, so we learned how to find these limits graphically. Now we did an example with piecewise functions. Um, make sure that you know how to graph those so that you can um, visualize the graph and use the limits to help you out there. And that is it. Uh, one side of limits is not too bad. Uh, it's just a, a little extension of the previous lesson. Okay, and I hope you understood this and I hope this helped you. And I will see you in the next lesson.